everyone and welcome to Fandom Vintage. My name is Lily and today I am going to talk to you about how I made this chocolate frog handbag. The chocolate frog is my favorite treat from Honeydukes. Not only is it one of the first sweet treats that we get introduced to in the wizarding world, but also because chocolate. As you can see here, this bag has little, what do you call these? Snaps. As you can see, it is closed by snaps at the top and when you open it, of course, it is chocolate colored inside. Again, because chocolate. I wanted to make this something I could wear with a 1940s or 50s kind of style and so the size of the bag is kind of in reference to something you would find in that era, although of course the bag looks like a huge chocolate frog box. And I just wanted to show you guys how I made this bag and how I put it all together. Alright, so let's get to it! <laughs> So the first thing I did was to come up with a template of all of the pieces and printed them all out, laid them side by side, and taped all the pieces together. And here they are all cut out. I'll be using some heavy duty chipboard, some hot glue, spray glue, rivets, snaps, a set of purse feet, and two rolls of the Cricut Everyday Iron-On in gold. I'll also be using an X-Acto knife, hole punch, ruler, and some tape. After cutting out all of the template pieces for the chipboard, I traced them all onto the chipboard and cut them out with an X-Acto knife. In total, there are five rectangular pieces, five triangular pieces, and a pentagon. Here I'm using a little bit of tape to hold all of the pieces together to form the top of the box. I just wanted to make sure everything lays nice and even, and then laying it out flat using a larger piece of tape just to make sure things stay nice and secure while we glue everything together. Time for a bit of hot glue. While everything is taped on the outside, I run a small bead of hot glue along all of the seams on the inside of the box and then remove all of the tape. Then to reinforce the outside, I also run a bead of glue, scraping away any excess with a scrap piece of chipboard. For the bottom of the box, I did use a random box I had lying around to create a 90 degree angle while gluing the rectangular pieces to the pentagonal piece. And I also glue the vertical edges between each of the rectangular pieces as I go along. Now just making sure the top and bottom fit together. On the rectangular portion of the template, there are a couple of guide markers. There is one with all four corners to be marked on the bottom of the bag for the purse feet to go into, and on the top side of the bag are the two holes on either side, and that will be for the handle to be attached later on. So now that they're all marked out, I use my hole punch to punch out the two holes on either side on the top of the bag. So the type of purse feet I'm using for this bag have two prongs and also a washer on the back. I'm using the washer to mark out where the prongs will go using my marks from earlier as a guide. Using my X-Acto knife, I make some small incisions where the prongs will go where I marked them earlier. Time to cut out some fabric and here are the pattern pieces. For the outside of the bag, I decided to use a very purple medium weight cotton. Here I am tracing out the pattern onto the fabric. I also fold down the seam allowance and mark that as well. And this is just to give myself a better guide to sew later on. And after cutting everything out, the pieces we have are the top, the piece for the bottom, a long strip for the sides, some oval pieces for the closures, and a smaller strip for the handle. Now for the inside of the bag, I decided to use a brown felt, which I then traced out the felt pieces and cut out as well, uh, keeping in mind that most of these do not have a seam allowance except for the one seam that I will be sewing later on. 
Because I'm using craft felt, it isn't quite long enough for that long strip to go along the sides, so I decided to break it up into three shorter strips instead. Now time to pull out the good old Cricut Maker. So very important thing to do in Design Space before cutting anything out in the Cricut Maker is to mirror the image, otherwise the text will be backwards on the vinyl later on. So just smooth that gold vinyl onto the Cricut map and let her rip. Next is weeding out all of the negative space from the vinyl, which is the most tedious task, but also oddly therapeutic. So now we're left with the gold vinyl all cut out, still on the plastic backing. Now before ironing on the vinyl to the fabric, there is a flower on the top left corner that I will be cutting out and setting aside for later, since that will be going on the seam. Making sure I have the rectangular shape tab on the bottom, I preheat the fabric and lay the vinyl down, making sure to line up all of the corners with the fabric. Then I place a pillowcase over the whole thing and hold and press the iron, flip it to the other side and also iron the back side. Let it cool completely and peel off that plastic backing. I repeat the process with the bottom piece and the side panel. Now to attach the side panel to the bottom piece. In order to do this, I will be placing right sides together and pinning all the way around all five sides of that bottom piece and sewing it all together. And as you can see here, I also clipped the corners where the side panel would round around the corners so that it won't bunch when we flip it right side out. I decided to keep the ends open and not sew them close quite yet, that way I can slide the fabric over the box. And here I'm just making sure everything fits. So to give the top of the box its shape, I will be pinning alongside that seam allowance by first putting the right sides together, pinning it, making sure not to puncture any of the vinyl, and sewing it together. Now you can see it's formed kind of that cone shape for the top of the box. And along that seam, you can see the blank space where the flower we had cut out earlier will go. So I just centered that flower onto that space, ironed the front underneath a pillowcase and the back, and removed the backing once it's completely cool. This is kind of optional, but just to get clean corners around the bag later on, I top stitched all of the tabs around the outside. Here I am laying down a good amount of paper before I work with any spray glue, just to protect my work surface. For the top of the box, I sprayed an even layer of glue and laid down the fabric starting with the point in the middle and slowly smoothing from the middle all the way out to the edges. For the inside, I just laid a little bit of glue along the top edges and I accidentally sprayed all five edges, but this one is actually just four edges to fold down the tabs and excluding the rectangular tab, which is what we're going to be using to attach the top of the bag to the bottom later on. For the other half of the box, I made sure to orient the bottom where the purse feet were marked were towards me sprayed an even layer of glue only along the top side, and smoothed the fabric over, making sure to match up the corners and the open seam is in the bottom corner. From here, I just glue down one side at a time, starting where the open seam is, and just smoothing down all of the sides all the way around till we get to the other side. Now it's time to close up that open seam, and I do this just by hand sewing it closed. Of 
Going back into the inside of the box and spraying just a little bit along the top edges, I fold down all of that excess fabric and press it down to give it everything a nice clean edge. Now on to the purse feet. I use my X-Acto to cut some slits in the fabric using the holes I made earlier as a guide. The prongs of the purse feet can now go into those holes that we had cut open and on the inside to place the washer where those prongs are and press the prongs down to secure them in place. Next, I sprayed a layer of glue only on the bottom side of the box, and this is to attach the top side of the box using that rectangular tab that we left out from earlier. With the small oval shapes that I cut out earlier, I sewed around the edges, leaving a small gap to turn it right side out. I use a little pencil to help me do that, and tucking in the frayed edges and the open edges and top stitching all the way around the outside. I repeat the process with two small rectangular pieces and also with the shorter strip for the handle of the bag. Once the strap is done, I slip it through a one inch D-ring and secure it by sewing across. To attach the handles onto the bag, I first cut holes in the fabric by using my X-Acto knife and using the holes we cut out earlier as a guide. Wrapping the small rectangular fabric around the D-ring, I use the paper pattern to mark out where the rivets will go. I use a seam ripper to open up holes in the fabric and put the rivets through. Then putting the rivets through the holes placed on the bag placing the caps onto the rivets and hammering them in place. Using about a four inch piece of ribbon, I hot glue to the front and the back of the box just to keep it from swinging all the way open. With the oval piece I sewed earlier, I snip a small hole into one end and attach the top half of the snap using the hammer and tool. And I also repeated the same with the other oval piece as well. Here I'm just deciding where I want the snaps to go on the top of the bag, marking them out, and hole punching where the snaps are going to go. Then I put in the parts for the bottom part of the snap, and use the tool to secure it in place. To make sure the snaps in the top of the bag line up correctly, I put the snaps in place and use just a little bit of hot glue before closing down the top then opening up and gluing down the rest of the strap. Now for the felt, I sew those two edges together and to glue it into the bag, I start with the very center, placing it in and slowly gluing and pressing my way from the center out towards the edges. Then gluing the strips along the side, working one side at a time and making my way around. Then, last but not least, gluing the last piece of felt along the bottom. And there we are. I know that there were a lot of different gadgets and tools that I used to put this together, but if you'd like to try to make one for yourself, I do have a template and pattern that I will go ahead and link for you in the description box below. And that does include the SVG file that I use to cut out this design out of vinyl with the Cricut Maker. All right, y'all. Well, I hope that you enjoyed watching how I made this bag and following along with me. If you did, please feel free to like my video and subscribe to my channel for more vintage geeky crafty goodness. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.